Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session onwards, we are going to start a new level where we will perform all the activities which will require to improve our design and implementation of SPFX client side web part application. Before starting our this improvement journey, we must have to understand what actually the flaws is in our earlier implementation. So let's discuss about the concerns which we are having in our earlier implementation. So guys, in our earlier implementation, we have used to no framework or our SPFX client side web part application. In the way we have implemented our earlier solution that gives us majorly four concerns. The first concern, the implementation of earlier solution is missing the separation of concern principle. So what it means? It means that we are writing all the codes of our solution in a single file. So what it means? Let's look into that. Guys, we are into the solution which we have developed in our last level of learnings. And over here, we have created event registration application that is a web part application. And if you remember that, we have designed all our UI inside this web part.ts file. It is a single file where we have defined all our logic, whether it is a UI, whether it is a implementation of the create item, read item, delete item, update item. So all these logics we have written in a single file. And this way of writing the code is really, really wrong. Why it is wrong? Because it is very difficult to manage whenever we are working in a larger project. And when we work in a larger project, we have team of developers. And as you know that, Whenever we are having team of developers, so each developer has different responsibility. Some has the responsibility of implementing the UI design. Some developer has responsibility of implementing the service side of application. Now you can imagine if you are writing all the code in a single file, so how difficult it is to manage this kind of a project. And that is going to be error prone. If you write your code in such a way, then it will miss the separation of concern principle. So you must be asking that what actually the separation of concern principle is. So guys, separation of concern principle is a principle. With the help of that, we make sure that each functionality of the application should have their own respective sections. And that respective section should be concerned about a single functionality. For example, suppose if you are implementing a UI for your application, a UI file should hold all the logic for the user interface implementation, that is UI implementation. Another thing, if you are having the services where you are having create item, read item, update item, delete item, so that will also hold all the logic for the service calls. So now let's proceed further. So guys, now we have seen concern one where we are having the missing separation of concern principle. And due to that, we are having the concern two where all the logic resides in the single file due to concern one. Now the third concern, if you remember that from the HTTP operations, we were using SP HTTP module. And to use the SP HTTP module, we have to write many lines of code. So let's look into this. Guys, if you remember that while, while implementing the create item, read item, update item, and delete item functionality, we have used the HTTP modules. If you remember that, we have used SP hyphen HTTP modules and because of these modules we are doing the communication between webpart application and SharePoint and to achieve this functionality we have to write many lines of code and over here if you will look into this then you will find that it is starting from 107 and it is ending at 145 so it is almost taking 38 lines of code to write a create item functionality and that is our concern number three so the next concern we are having is the use of external library configuration while doing the ui implementation so what i mean to say that let's look into that so guys in our earlier implementation if you remember that we have used the bootstrap to style our ui elements and to use that we have configured some of the configuration inside our config.json where we have mentioned about the external libraries and that we are referring to some external libraries url like ajax and the bootstrap and that is a overhead step and that is our concern number four if you miss any of the configuration step there is a chances to break the ui implementation so guys now we have discussed about the four major concerns which we are having now the question over here is how we are going to get rid of all these concerns 
So, so what are the solutions we have to get rid of all these concerns? So guys, let's discuss about the solutions now. So guys, the solutions to resolve the designing and implementation concerns of earlier way of working, we will perform these four things. The first thing, what we do, we can design the layered architecture for service and for UI implementation. And with the help of this solution, we can achieve separation of concern principle. So over here, you must be asking that what actually the layered architecture is. So let's look into that. So guys, the layered architecture is a way by which you can write the code in a different layer for your application. So what it means? So for example, if you are having an application which has an user interface and that user interface has different different functionality like create, read, update, delete. So all these operations is a service call and the nature of these functionality is to talk to the SharePoint and perform the respective actions. So with layered architecture approach, we can combine all these logics inside a single file and which majorly perform the service operations. Same way, we are having another file which will mainly dedicated for user interface implementation where we will write all the code which is related to user interface creation and with this way of writing the code, we can easily achieve the separation of concern principle and that will give us the ability to manage our code very easily. So guys, if you are not understanding any of this concept, don't worry. Once we perform all the lab activities, then you will come to know about what actually we are talking about. For a time being, if you want to understand what actually the layered architecture is, you just have to understand that layered architecture is nothing but a way by which you can arrange your code in a different layers as per their functionality. So now let's proceed further. So guys, to achieve the layered architecture functionality, we are going to use we are going to use react framework to implement our spfx client side web part applications another solution we are going to implement in our coming session that is we will use office ui fabric to implement ui layer and because of this solution we will get rid of overhead of external library setup task and that will also help us to achieve the same functionality in a lesser line of codes now the last but not the least solution which we are going to implement in our upcoming implementation for our all HTTP operations, we are going to use PNP module that is practice and pattern modules instead of SP HTTP module. So what is the benefit we are going to get? We will achieve all the functionality in drastically lesser line of code. So guys, we are going to implement all these solutions in the upcoming implementation. But now the question over here is what we are going to implement. And the answer is we are going to implement event registration, the same application but this time it is going to look something like this and that has all the functionalities which we were having earlier where we will create the functionality for create, read, update, delete. But this time we are going to write the code in more appropriate manner using the layered architecture as well as we will also use the office UI fabric to get the user interface and then we will also use the PNP module that help us to design the service layer. In the service layer perform all the communication from application to SharePoint as well as SharePoint to the web part application. So guys on this note I am stopping over here. See you in the next session. Till then bye bye. Take care.